my my mission that I want to build a network of individuals and businesses that then goes on to support a network of orphanages and nonprofits, um, you know, that, that are really making a difference in the world. Uh, and so um, I want to build businesses and I want to do it competitively and profitably. And then I want to, you know, use use that to um, to get back and you know, do things. But in 2024, I'd like to do two to three million um, and I'd like to be 100 percent OA to prep, you know, laptop work, you know, working with a VA team. And then I, I have some ambitions with a marketing company. You know, I think I think there's a big opportunity with the marketing side of things. So. Cheers. Welcome back to another installation of the Doughboys podcast. Today, I am joined by my lovely studly co-hosts and a special guest. We got Alpha Logan and we got Golden Locks McGill. And as our special guest of this episode, we have Cody Does Amazon Mr. Go Sell Crap on the Internet himself. Yes, sir. What's going on, Cody? <clears throat> What's up, guys? Glad to be here. Loki, I've always dreamed about saying that line, especially with Cody on, on the air. Nice. I'm telling you, we should have started recording like five minutes ago. We we, we missed a lot of good content already. It's true. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure with our personalities, we'll we'll be fine. <laughs> so how's it hanging, Cody? Man, life is good. Just uh, work. Working all the time. I haven't. Um, I haven't got Logan's new uh, thing with the outsource. I haven't jumped on that bandwagon enough yet. But uh, good. I like the work. It's uh, you know, it's a good life. It keeps you humble. It keeps you humble. That's for That's sure. True. That's a hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Logan's definitely on that path of becoming a little bit of a robot. So all right, you know, <laughs> starting already. But- Starting already, but uh, Cody. So there's there's a, a main question that everyone's been wondering. Uh, like my DMs like flooded with this question, and they really want to know. So I hope you can give us a true and honest answer. Answer. They want to know how much can you clean on the little clean jerk. How much can I clean a jerk? I'll tell you. I've got this down. I've been doing CrossFit for a year, and I've got. I mean, I've got it. I mean, down to a science. Hold on. I'll tell you what my last clean and jerk was. Because in my last conversation with Logan, he said he can he can clean bigger than you. Yeah, it's oh, actually okay. doubled since then too. So oh, he, nice. du- he doubled in twenty minutes. <laughs> I I treat CrossFit like I treat um, selling on Amazon. I, I enjoy most of it, uh, but I'm definitely not the best. Uh, okay, hold on. Two, let's see if you can see my numbers here. Two twenty five is what I got last time. My my He's PR good. so. So now that we have you on the podcast, not everyone knows who you are. So can you tell us, you know, your origin story, how you got into Amazon? And even before that, like what what gave you the entrepreneur bug to kind of start your own business and kind of do your own thing? Yeah, for sure. So um, I, uh, I I have kind of a unique story. I um, I'd never wanted to be like a business person. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear my dog out there. Sorry if you can. Sure can. Uh, he sounds lovely. Um, I never, I never wanted to be a business person. Um, I wanted to just do missions through the church. That was kind of my, um, that was my goal. And then, um, one day during a church service, um, somebody was praying for me and they came up to me and said, um, Hey, uh, I feel like the Lord is telling me that you're going to be a business person and that you're like, they went on and said, you know, just a whole spiel of just random things that I, nobody had ever really spoken into my life or that I'd ever really, you know, thought about for myself. And, um, it didn't happen right off. And I, but I I think, I think that was kind of the turning, like, like my, my mindset started to change and I I was pretty young then. And then, um, later on down the road, I, uh, I, you know, had some other, you know, business ideas and things I wanted to do. And then, um, I discovered reselling in 2017, the Gary V 27 flip challenge. Um, and it was, I think it was, uh, sell 20,070, uh, or $2,170 or something like that. And, uh, and so I was like, well, I'm going to do this. Let's see if I can do it. And then, uh, kind of went downhill from there. We, um, we started selling gym equipment out of our garage and then we, um, we started flipping pallets. We did uh, 17 seven foot uh, Amazon return pallets. Um, and uh, we did that in like four weeks or something. And uh, that that was great. That was crazy. 
but we were selling on eBay. And so we started scanning stuff when it was selling for way more on Amazon. And uh, that's how we got on Amazon. So that's that's pretty much the, the origin story. And then we just kind of been building since then. Sweet. So you literally transferred to Amazon because you just happened to scan stuff that you were flipping on eBay? Pretty much. Had you heard yeah. anyone talking about Amazon before? Not much. The only thing I knew about Amazon uh, when I started was that I probably wouldn't get to keep my account. I had been told that, you know, most people get their account shut down um, over something dumb. And so yeah. we just kind of I was like, well, I'll try it, you know, and see. And, and I think for probably the first year, um, I was just waiting for the email the whole time. I'm like, this is going to happen. I can't, you know, the other shoe's going to drop. And, and so, uh, you know, that, that held me back some, I think, but it also, you know, um, we learned eBay pretty well and that was, um, that was good for us. So. Yeah. That's so funny that you say that. Cause like even now, you know, we've been selling, all of us have been selling on, on uh, Amazon for some time now. And I'm sure our account health is, you know, pretty superb, but even now, like every single time I get a, uh, an Amazon email, like my heart drops just a little bit every single time. And it's yep. so funny because I, I had one email that came in, I don't know, maybe like a month ago, I can't remember, where it literally said my account was suspended. And it was like yep. one of those like scam emails that's just trying to get me to click. Oh, crap. man, my my heart dropped like straight mm. to the floor for like two minutes until I realized it was a fake email. I remember you sent it to me and my heart dropped. <laughs> <laughs> it's wild. Yeah, it's definitely wild. You definitely have to have a backup plan. Have you guys had your account shut down before? Is that have you ever experienced that? Never, not yet. <laughs> good good for you. I have. So. You have. How'd that go? When, when was this? We were selling a certain product in 2020. What uh, was it? April. Let's get um, to tell us. Uh, let's see. I'm past the statute of limitations, probably. So uh, uh, we were selling hand sanitizer like a mug. I mean, we were selling like as fast as we could get our hands on it, and. Uh, that and a few other things um, that are controversial. Uh, but, uh, you know, we sold so much. Uh, I remember one day I took a, a like had to be 20 hours of driving. Like we went all through Georgia, all through Alabama and came home and everything that we bought sold in an hour. Like it was the most unreal thing I've ever seen in my life. And I'm talking about big sales too, like two, three hundred dollar sales, um, 12 packs of stuff. That would just, I mean, just like ding, 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 ding. And it was scary. It was terrifying because they were selling so fast. And um, long story short, they uh, they did a review. And um, I forget what the re- they they called it something, but they they shut us down. They made us do a um, uh, whole appeal process and the whole thing. It was, uh, it was insane. How long were you shut down for? Uh, a little over a month. Um, Man. We it was long enough to uh long enough to to really mess with my head because i mean we had a bunch of money tied up but luckily we had a good bit of cash on hand and so um you know that that kind of ties back to uh, you know we we have an ebay business and so whenever things get slow on the amazon side or if there's um like when, when we bought the house about a year ago and that wiped us out on cash um with like zero like we spent our last dollar getting moved in uh and the down payment and everything uh, and so you focus on you know that side of the business and uh so that's what we did during that time was uh I, actually that's not true during that time i focused on day trading uh i had a great little day trading uh um like three months of i did really really well and then i've never done it since so uh, but but uh that's a different story <laughs> Very versatile. What kind of uh, selling do you do on Amazon? Uh, we're like 90%, 95% arbitrage. Okay. So, OA uh, or RA? I, I wish we were like 70% OA, but right now we're more like 50-50. So we do, uh, we do a good bit of stores uh, running out and, um, and shopping in store right now. So what what's the reason for that? Like, do you do it mainly because, you know, it allows you to create content for social media or just because it's so quick and accessible for you in your area or or kind of break that down for us? Yeah, it's mostly cash. We're, we're not very uh, we're not very rich. And so uh, not yet anyways. And so, um, you know, we uh, we run out of cash doing just OA. like I could I could probably spend, you know, 75 grand today or something on OA stuff and and 
probably have have the capacity to you know to move it but we we just we don't we don't have the cash and uh in 20 2021 we um we went really 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 deep with credit and um i just don't sleep as well when i'm highly leveraged like that and so we've kind of made the decision you know there's a cap of what what we spend and when we get close to that you know then it's more about chasing um you know the the home run type stuff uh rather than building the you know the boring replims and and those sort of things so uh i don't think everybody should do it my way but um uh, it works for us or, you know, it's working for us. So we're, we're seeing steady growth and, um, and like I said, I sleep better at night. So, uh, you know, uh, cat, cat is, uh, is where it's at for us. That's definitely super important. And, and you know what, you're right. Like there's people in the Amazon space who are only on maybe like 10 or 12, 15 ASINs, but they are home run ASINs and they make a living off of that and, you know, are making a hundred K profit yearly. Sure. Um, so it's definitely doable and it's just being able to find those. It's just the thing that I've, that I've noticed on my end is just whenever you do do that and that one product, it, that's like your, your golden egg dies out or it gets tanked or just something happens with, with the Amazon listing, then it's onto the next one. You know, you have to, you have to spend some time finding that next golden egg. Yeah, for sure. We talked about this a bit before on the podcast, but there's a story called nine ASINs. Uh, where Cisco and I were on this one product line and it was so good. Like we could streamline it. The prep would be super simple and I could just focus on these nine ASINs and make, I don't know, like 15,000 bucks a month in profit, but it's just one product line. So we're not diversified at all. If something happens to that listing, those ASINs, that product line as a whole, the whole business collapses. And then like two weeks after I mentioned that idea, Amazon hops on all the listings. (laughs) And not only that, literally probably eight you know eight nine hours ago i think both me and logan got the same email that the that one of the variations was restricted became restricted yeah and that one that that one ace in variation was probably the fastest moving one out of all of them too yep it was that's sad i mean that's why you sometimes you have to go wide and not like put all your eggs in one basket right the game is on yeah Yeah. so would you say ra is your favorite way to source and if so, what's your favorite store to hit? Like if you, if you, if all the stores, you know, for whatever reason, no longer existed and you just had to have one store, which store is it that you would go every single day? Hmm. I would say my favorite store to source hundred percent is Sam's club. Uh, I think, uh, I think Sam's club is underrated, uh, underrated for sure. Uh, and it probably up there with BJ's wholesale. Um, they're a great, a great place to source. And, um, you know, I, I it's kind of like the same thrill as uh, Walmart or Target, except, you know, um, when you find a home run, you can actually hit it because yeah. you can get, you know, a good bit of, uh, you know, an item. And so, you um, definitely go that's, deep. yeah, mm-hmm. that's, that's been good for us. And, um, we also sell on Walmart. So, um, the, uh, the a everything that is at sam's club has a walmart listing almost without mm-hmm. exception and an established walmart um listing and so you can you know uh, you can make better bets with the walmart side too oh for sure for sure no I, so I, i'm definitely with you there you're Go selling ahead. stuff from sam's club back on walmart.com yeah we're selling sam's club inventory same same way you would do for amazon but we're selling it as a walmart third-party seller Okay, and you're buying it with the intention of selling it on Walmart, not like Walmart. It's a backup option. Because we're low on, like, I keep, I hate to keep going back to uh, being broke, but <laughs> on the Doughboy <laughs> podcast. <laughs> but um, yeah, so one of the criteria for our purchasing uh, full price new stuff is if it doesn't move on Walmart or doesn't if it doesn't move on Amazon, can we move it on Walmart? So if there's something that's only good for Amazon, but not good for Walmart, and then there's another product that's equal, but I can sell it on both, we're going to buy the one that's, you know, that I can sell on both just because cash flow. So that's kind of, yeah. uh, some, you know, something that we do a little different in business. But yes. Walmart's amazing. Like uh, I, I was telling, so I, I don't know if you guys know Carter Maxwell. I was on yeah. a call with him. Like uh, you should have him on. That dude's a genius. Um, but um, I, I was a robot. Do what? <laughs> He's not a robot. He might be a robot. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Um, Room is true. I was on a call with him uh, like over a year ago, and I had just signed up for Walmart, 
And I was like, look, you guys need to get in on this. Like Walmart's amazing. And it's, you know, like I, I was talking it up pretty good. And then I kind of just slept on it for six months after I said all that. And then uh, now, now we're getting, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're doing pretty well. We like Walmart. You, the, the different, like when, when we get a sale of an item on Amazon, it's great. You know, you guys know that, um, but you get it on Walmart and it's 30% higher price. And, you know, like it's, it's exciting. Like the, the, there's there's a lot of margin on on some of those plays yeah. that you can do on, on walmart so i'm sure there's less competition than there is on yeah. amazon way <laughs> less, like i like i almost shouldn't like i almost wish that i uh wouldn't have, like would have brought it up because you guys are gonna be famous <laughs> but, uh but like um you know like, we'll uh we'll cut this part and then we'll uh put it on on our reels and just put it on shorts <laughs> we're, we're, yeah. yeah sponsored ad exactly <laughs> Uh, Pop yes. on Walmart. Get I've actually not made a lot of content about Walmart. Uh, not not yet, at least, just because like I, I think anybody who has a Walmart seller account has a you know has a um, a big opportunity right now. So. so, what percentage of your business would you say is Walmart, and do you want that to grow? Um, it if I want it to grow or not, I'm doing an experiment this month. I'm sending a bunch of the inventory that we have. Um, we have one brand that we're really heavy on Walmart. We're sending a bunch, like like a, we're having a baby next month, um, and so um, yeah, yeah, it's uh, no, number six. Um, wow. yeah, but, yeah. And she's still out there squatting. Personal records, <laughs> yeah, huh? exactly. Eight months pregnant. Yeah, my wife's a superhero. But, um, <laughs> she's stronger than you. I know it. it she, yeah, probably. Um, well, so we're planning next month will probably be you know a busy month, uh, and so um, I'm sending a bunch of stuff to WFS, which is Walmart's version of FBA, yeah. and so. If that goes well, then I want to grow Walmart. Um, that that's that's a goal of mine is to grow that. If it goes well, and I have a, I have a good friend who did um, nine hundred thousand on uh, on Walmart um, in 2020, 2022. She did nine hundred thousand, um, and she swears by WFL. Well, so if it goes well, you know she's making some real you know like real good money. Um, oh, I, want, yeah. I, I want to uh, I want to grow it. But a uh, percentage split, um, we're probably like 80% Amazon right now and 20% Walmart, uh, if, if I had to put a number on it. So somewhere in that neighborhood. Sweet. This is yeah. terrible, but when you said we're having a baby next month, my immediate first thought was like that was code for like a bunch of product going into Walmart. <laughs> it's really, I was like, what? I've never heard this that before. Yeah. We're <laughs> yeah. having a baby. <laughs> it's all going to Walmart. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. yeah, so I think Walmart is definitely going to be new to a lot of our audience, and I definitely know like almost nothing about it. One thing yeah, I'm sure. curious if you could explain is how do you tell if a product's going to perform well because they don't have anything like Keepa, do they? There's a there's a Chrome extension called Data something Data Spark, I think it is. I, I tried it out. Um, it's a, it's a hundred dollars a month, which by the way I think Keepa should be up there. Yeah, with that I agree. Uh, but um, I didn't love it, and I'm also really cheap, and so I didn't keep it. Um, but uh, all my I mean my strategy is I source the product like I'm buying it for Amazon, and then I look for the um, data on Walmart. So. Look at the Keepa, look at the, um, you know, the criteria as if I'm buying for Amazon. And then if it's good, if it fits my criteria, then I look to see if it has a Walmart listing. And, and I'm also looking for a higher price. I want to be, I want to like selling, uh, listing an order and then actually selling it on Amazon is a lot more of a headache um, than it is on Amazon. Like uh, Walmart, it, they just don't have their stuff together as good as Amazon does. So it's kind of a... Um, you know, it's, it's a little bit more of a process. So I want more money if I, you know, if I'm going to mess with, um, you yeah. know, going through that process. They're basically just looking at the Amazon data and assuming that if it performs really well on Amazon, then they're, then it's probably going to perform well at Walmart too. It definitely translates. Like they're yeah. like the same kind of stuff that, you know, that, that I'm selling on Amazon is also selling on Walmart and, uh, you know, at a higher premium too. So okay, cool. <clears throat> this, yeah, I've, yeah, we haven't talked much about Walmart. So like the sending in, is there like is there the equivalent of uh fbm and fba or like how does that whole like shipping and process work it's pretty much the same yeah um okay. uh, what walmart uh fbm is a lot like ebay like it's it's very similar to ebay um that that's kind of what i equate it to except that it's easier to do um 
you know, you can list 12 and kind of bet that they're all going to sell through, you know, um, the same way Amazon does. Um, I don't know about the um, WFS, which is the FBA for Walmart. Like, I, I don't know about it yet. So okay. I've heard good things. People, you know, people that I'm, you know, in group chats with and talking with every day, that's what they're doing. And, you know, they're having a lot of success with it. But I, I haven't. I've never sent in one. So ask me in six months and then I'll, <laughs> I can yeah. tell you. If we'll have you, on. On yeah. we'll have you back yeah. on to talk about WFS. Have you back on the Doughboys? We'll, we'll schedule it today. We'll, 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 you'll be a recurring <laughs> guest to tell us each update. But yeah. um, so, Cody, so, you know, you, you've you had a, a very interesting journey to the point, you know, where you are now. You know, you said that you were kind of inspired by your church to kind of start and, you know, become a businessman and, and be able to help other people with along that path. And then obviously you have your wife and you have your family and you have your kids. Can you tell us like, what is a really proud moment that you've had as an entrepreneur that might be able to inspire people who are just trying to start out Amazon and, and kind of grow their business? Yeah, sure. Um, let's see. Uh, I really like all, all of the perks that are really important to me are just from being self-employed. I, I, I've, uh, I've, I've been like 60 hours a week working for a company, you know, making great money, but just kind of being, you know, my soul is kind of theirs and, and having that and being that. And then also instead being able to do that for myself, you know, uh, being at every basketball game is a really cool thing, you know, when you have kids and, um, you know, uh, when we went on that, uh, that last vacation, that was a really big moment for, you know, for us. Cause we, um, you know, we'd, we'd bought the house, um, you know, which we did a hundred percent with Amazon money. And, uh, you know, like I'd never seen that much cash, you know, before in my life and being able to, you know, to just kind of put that into, we got it, we, we got it, we got the, um, the house and love the property and everything we got in right before the interest rates went up and we also got a great deal on the house. So we got both, you know, kind of, uh, you know, awesome. got, got both ends of the spectrum. So that, that was a huge that was a huge thing. That's probably what I should have just said. Oh, because that was <laughs> such a big deal. You know, I, I grew up in projects. Uh, you know, I, I grew up like super poor and, and whatnot. So um, so that was a big thing. But like when we went on the vacation, you know, we went to Disney, we went and seen, um, you know, some other things like it was just really cool to have like a full, you know, full out family vacation and, you know, just kind of, you know, um, being able to unplug and, uh, you know it's cool to be able to step back and kind of see the fruits of your labor whenever, you know, whenever things are going well. So mm. see it and enjoy it for sure. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm curious about Cody does Amazon a bit. So can you talk about your social media? Like, yeah. you know, what's your motive behind creating content? Yeah. Uh, well, I want to be super duper rich one day. Um, <laughs> that's, uh, that's kind of <laughs> me too. Me too. Yeah. That's a goal of mine. And, uh, that dough. And, yeah, there, uh, there's no limit to the amount of money I think I'm worth. Uh, and it's, uh, um, I don't know if you guys are, uh, office fans, but, um, yeah. So just yeah, wait till I'll, the quote at the end. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <nice quote. laughs> the real, the social media thing, it kind of goes back to, I hate to be a Gary Vee fanboy, but, uh, Gary Vee, if you see this, I will move to New York and work for you right now. If, Gary uh, Vee. Just give, give me a call. Uh, but he literally, they put out a thing. He's like, in the back of the line, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly right. Um, uh, but, uh, he said, you just need to be putting out content, like just no questions, just go make stories. And then I remember there was a thing where he was like, just hold your phone like this and talk. <laughs> and, and I, I've been doing that for like five years now. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I, have, I have a YouTube now. Uh, I don't know if you guys have been paying. I, I put out like six shorts yesterday cause I, I did, uh, I put one up and it got like 2000 views. That's and I was awesome. like, this is amazing. You know, yeah. Is so yeah. And so then I was like, I'm putting these because I mean, that's what I've been doing for five years is putting out short form content on Instagram. And that's right. how I've grown. And so now yeah. I'm just going to let's see if I, I can, you know, play the game with YouTube as well. Well, I feel like YouTube shorts is like the equivalent of what Walmart is for like Amazon sellers. Yeah. It's kind of slept yep. on. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Totally agree. So it's, it's time to get on that bandwagon. That's yeah. awesome. I, I'm about to hire a guy who is going to recycle my Instagram reels right. and put, 
put them for YouTube and then just do two a day. And then I'm not going to do anything except for, you know, just kind of reply back to comments and stuff. So that's, that's what I'm hoping. Outsourcing. I love it. Yeah, I yep. guess I am. Yeah, that is. That's outsourcing. <laughs> that's the yeah. first step. I'm kind of, I'm kind of slow with things. And so having someone at, like the amount of time it takes me to actually like sit and type a reel and do the whole thing. Like I, I figured it'd probably be worth the time to pay, you know, some, somebody else to do it. So, yeah. I mean, outsourcing is also like a bit of a slow burn. You know what I mean? It's like it takes a long time for you to ever see the fruits of its labor. It's not a it's not a quick thing where it's like I'm just going to outsource this, unless you're out, Logan out all over burger and you can just <laughs> go <laughs> Logan. It. Yeah, it still took no, a while. It takes a while. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I started outsourcing really like a year ago, mm-hmm. so yeah. it really was a, a year long process to get to the point where just about everything is outsourced. It was literally around this time that you hit me up wanting to go have these on a VA. Yeah. Yep. And it's one of my biggest business regrets. I should have just said <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, That's I awesome. think my first one started January 25th or somewhere around there, 2022. So we're coming right up on a year. That's really cool. And now you have, what, a, a VA team of six? Twelve. Oh, no, right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Whatever you think it is, just double it. Double, double it. it. <laughs> How many cards That's do you incredible. have? Double it. <laughs> That's awesome. How much inventory you want to spend today? Double, double it. it. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, seriously, he's got me buying inventory for him. But, all right, so you have a lot going on. You said for a little bit time, for a little bit of time, you were a day trader. You are on Amazon. Very, very on very eBay. Good. <laughs> You're on social media. Cody does day yeah. trading. <laughs> Cody, <laughs> Cody does the internet. That's that's what the new. He's a renaissance man. Is what he I'm is. not afraid to just try something. Exactly. I, I think one of my biggest strengths as a person is I don't care to look dumb. Like it, like it literally mm. like doesn't bother me even a little bit to like come in and just be like, I don't know that. Like I'd like to learn that, and you know, I, I, just being curious about things has helped you know a lot. So. And I that's think that's what makes superpower. you. Yeah. That, that is superpower. And I think that's one of the things that makes you probably one of the most authentic people mm. on the social media space, at least like yeah, within, nice. within our niche, for sure. Appreciate you saying that. And that's what people crave, right? Is authentic, uh, authentic, authenticity. Yeah. 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 That's why Logan has such a hard time. He's very robotic, you know? <laughs> All right. Bro, no, I instinctually, I instinctually trust Logan. I, I, I see him talking. I'm like, oh, I trust that guy. I, I, I can get hey, behind thanks. <laughs> Appreciate it. I don't know. He seems a little sketch to me. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'm just naive. Maybe. maybe that's it. <laughs> it sounds like you're still just mad about not going have yeah, on that VA with him. Yeah, that's facts. <laughs> that's I have some still some, some salt about that. Some regrets. <laughs> some regrets. That's personal awesome. regret though. Yeah. Hey, it's never too late, man. It's okay. We're at we're at one right now. Cody, how many? How many? Do you have do you have VAs? I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have uh, I have another business where I do consulting and you know some some stuff that's competitive with what you guys do. But um, uh, for for that business, I have a uh, full time VA and then I have two um, two contract VA. Uh, like whenever I have like a four hour project or something, I have those two people do those type of things. And so um, the the full time VA, she is a she does she literally just does sourcing and she runs my TA and T uh, tactical expander and and that sort of thing. So. How many companies do you have? 20. Double it. No, 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 no. Double, no whatever it is, double it. Yeah. <laughs> double it. I have, uh, I have the e-commerce stuff, and then I do some consulting stuff. So, okay. uh, yeah, the yeah. leads and things like that, like uh, that sort of thing. They're not kidding when they say you got a lot going on. That's, that's wild. <laughs> well, my my wife my wife is, uh, you know, she's a superhuman. Like, she she does, like, a lot, a lot. And so uh, that, that kind of uh, – I'm a workaholic. And so um, her being as great as she is helps me, you know, be a better workaholic. And so, uh, you know, we get a lot done. That's good. That's good. I have uh, one more question. Um, So where do you see your business and yourself, you know, professionally and personally headed in the next couple of years? Like, what what is it that you want to be doing? Yeah, I uh, my my mission like my, I, I work with a um, uh, a life coach, um, and what what we boil down to, like that's really important to me. That that's like my my mission is I, I want to build a network of individuals and businesses that then goes on to support a network of orphanages and nonprofits. Um, you know that that are really making a difference in the world. Uh, and so um, 
I want to build businesses and I want to do it competitively and profitably. And then I want to, you know, use, use that to, um, to give back and, you know, do things. But, um, I, I think I'll probably do things other than Amazon, but I, you know, um, my goal in 2024, um, 2023 is kind of a rebuilding year for us, for, for Amazon, just to get cash, um, cash flow back right where we had it. Um, but in 2024, I'd like to do two to 3 million. Um, and I'd like to be a hundred percent OA to prep, you know, laptop work, you know, working with a VA team and, um, and a laptop. And then I, I have some ambitions with a marketing company. Um, I, you know, I think, uh, I think there's a big opportunity with, um, you know, um, the, the marketing side of things. So, Sweet. Well, I think it's that time for our quote. And as I promised, it's going to be from the office. So here it is. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Wayne Gretzky, Michael Scott. Michael Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Scott. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you on the next one. Love it. Peace. See you guys.